At the outset, I'd like to thank marvelous 10 years that you have spent and contributed for technical and vocational education. Switzerland is regarded one of the best innovators in terms of technical and vocational education, and I'm always happy to be here time and again. Today, we have only 15 minutes. I know 12 minutes, there will be a yellow card, and there will be one minute, then red card will come. So I will go a little faster. I need to communicate something special today because I think you can play a greater role in transforming technical vocational education for sustainable development. As you know, that world has taken a oath. In 2015 end, it started from 2016, it will go to 2030, sustainable development goal, a new goal altogether a new vision for people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. We have not thought of the world like this. When you talk about Millennium Development Goal, we only talk about poverty elevation, and it was much focused on developing country. This is first time we are talking about climatic change, water, education, infrastructure, what not. So among the 17 goals, 169 target has been set. And very good news is that one, goal number four, has been exclusively for education with one clear agenda, quality, equitable education and lifelong learning for opportunity for all. And you will be glad to know, within the seven targets for education, three targets exclusively for technical, vocational education and training. Why so? The reason is very simple. World has realized that time is changing and Tibet and skill at the same stage. I used to say, if education is the key for development, Tibet is the master key. You have that master key in Switzerland, you have progressed well. Some of the countries in Europe, like Germany, Finland, and others has done Similarly, we need that master key throughout the world. There are four reasons this is the master key. First is educational imperative. People start to go everywhere, the university education. Switzerland, Germany, and few other countries, definitely Switzerland on the top. Like, people love to go in technical vocational education, creativity, critical thinking, all are there. We need to know the magic, why people are opting for technical vocational education in spite of university education being one of the challenge to them. In other countries, it is really a issue. That's why they need TVET, an alternative path. Second is the social imperative. This is called massive unemployment. We don't education for education's sake. We need education for work. Third is called technical Technological, technological imperatives. Lifelong learning is coming, technology is changing all the time. Skill, upgrade, upskill, upgrading, reskilling, all this continuous process is going on. And finally, there is a skill shortage. I think in the world, first time is realizing this. Like we have a lot of job to this industry 4.0 is coming, but where is the graduate who can take over this? There comes creativity, innovations, Entrepreneurship all need to be looked into a new ways. So for this reason, UNESCO has given high importance to TVET. We, we have a slogan, transform TVET first, then scale it up. Because nowadays it's a fashion to put a lot of money in TVET, but they are only scaling up the old system. It will not work. When we say transformation, first transformation is economic. It must be adhered to the labor market demand. Second transformation is equitable. You might progress very fast, 9% GDP growth rate, 10%, but if the country have a, many people not getting the advantage, you will be in danger. Some countries are in that, like India, because I'm an Indian, I can say that 9 to 10% growth rate, it has gone like last six, seven, or eight years. But when we look at the inclusiveness, we are not as good at that. So similarly, I don't want to name the country. There are many countries we need to look into that. But most importantly is the transformation lens. We need to have a new kind of TVET. This is not the old TVET that we are talking about. That new kind of TVET has got, you know, major dimension. The first dimension, I see it as a lifelong learnings. Because we need to check TVET policy, higher education policy, 
early childhood policy, basic education policy, no, all need to be seen as a continuum. And if you look at as a continuum, as an individual, today I am in Tibet, go for an internship, goes to this in the industry, come back to the, again, I can go to the university, I can, jig jack path is coming up. So lifelong learning strategy need to be work, school to work, work to school, all this has to become. Then climatic change is becoming a very important issue. So we need a new type of greening Tibet. UNESCO Univoc has come up with a guide. I will share with you that there's a five dimension of the guide. All worldwide, we are working on that. How to be a call, a institution, a greening Tibet. It is not only economy, also society need to be changed. So greening economy and greening society. So we have this five dimension. Then we have the public-private community partnership. I think never before we realized that this become a big, big issue. One on the first side in industry, where industry 4.0 is coming. On the other side, inclusiveness, community is demanding much more aspiration and for the society. So that's why we call it multi-stakeholder partnership. The fourth one, we call a new term called steaming Tibet. You need to steam Tibet. What does it mean? STEAM is basically, we are talking of science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics need to be integrated in the Tibet curriculum. Much more emphasis has to be given, because if that is not given, then we will not will get a new kind of Tibet that we are talking. Why of that? Because if you look at the changing workplace, it is changing from divergent technology to convergent technology, which is convergent technology. If you go to the where to a wireless society, we are going from petro-based to bio-based. When, when we are looking at this changing workplace, the convergent wireless and biotechnology, look at the technology that is coming. One is ICT, one is biotechnology, nanotechnology, mechatronics, uh, space technology, or green technology. When you look all this technology, there is something common in this. First, they are all interdisciplinary. It is not monodiscipline, it is multidiscipline. So cutting across, when you talk about mechatronics, electronics, and also you have to have a material science, automobiles, all need to be integrated there. Second is, it is oriented to research and development. What is the difference between a nanotechnician and nano engineer? Very hairline difference you will get. The foundation skill must be the same. Third one, when we talk about strong fundamentals are required because this is research and oriented. And finally, it's very shorter life cycle. So cycle is changing all the time. If you look to satisfy all this, you need steam or steaming. Earlier it was without arts. People are saying if you do not integrate arts in technical vocational education, when I was looking at your picture, the student has come up. I see their entertainment arts is also embedded in your innovations. So that's why steaming is very, very important. So three things are important in 21st century. First, foundation skill, transversal skill, and specialized skill. All need to be integrated together. If you don't have a foundation skill, you will not switch over one, two place, and you cannot take this lifelong learning strategy. If you don't have the transversal skill, you can't have the ability to present creativity, critical thinking, all greening, coming to under the transversal skill. If you don't have foundation footing on your subject, then you don't have any specialized role to play. So three need to be taken into the things. And for that reason, we have calling a new opportunities for TVET has come. We call it academic drift and vocational drift coming together. Academic drift means technical vocational institution going, adding more and more academic content. If you look to your institution, when I look at that and I see that more and more science, technology, education training you are going, you are offering maybe diploma, post diploma, even bachelors in VET, and I have seen some of the courses and curriculum. So this academic drift is not only in Switzerland, it's happening throughout the world in EQF level five and six, seven, uh, level technical vocational educations are coming. There is also vocational drift. Like higher education, um, our graduates are not getting job. They are looking for work, and they are coming back for vocational education. That is called the, the shift is coming. This to creating a new space, a new 
space altogether. On the other hand, you will see school to work, work to school coming together. If you look from the poverty alleviation, and also you have a sustainable development. All this thing creating a passage called broader transversal skill and higher competency. That is the new area of Tibet to emerge out of it. For that reason, we have, you know, Univox centers, which is, I'm representing as a head of that, and it is, uh, we have a 240 Univox centers in 167 countries. When I am talking about this, you know, landscape, we need to discuss more. We need to share each other. We need to learn from each other. We need to have to say that these are the practices which is giving you more insight to that. For that, I have always said that this unique network of 240 Tibet institutions, if they work like discuss together and they can share, it will be fantastic. That's why one of the reasons I came here, just to say that let's work together like SERI and your institution work together, and whatever the, the, the promising practices that you are developing, world is eager like to know, come to share with this network. We can spread it throughout the world, and that might be a new scope is coming. Why? Because we have a TVET forum, which is online you know, discussion where you can share any time. We have a virtual conferences, we have a TV database, we have a promising practices database, we have a glossary, we have a collaborative research, and we also do helping each other on capacity building and networking. I will request all of you, please go to the UNESCO Univoc website. At least you can see what kind of practice we are doing. It is not only just to give, it is both win-win situation. You can be beneficiary, you can also so contributory, a new world order will be coming. So on that plane, I like to say that my last slides, in fact, I am faster than I have anticipated, is <laughs> I think networking and partnership are the new strategic resource in post-2015. Earlier, you know that if you want to do anything, you need capital, you need land, you need all this thing. But now what you need a good networking and partnership. If you are not in a good network and partner, you might be resourceful today. You don't know after 10 years you will be or not. That's why I will say networking and partnership is a key strategic recourse. Thank you very much, and I'm extremely happy to raise any questions to you. Thank you very much. Shyamal Machundar.